the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. for joining me for another episode of the bring back soul music podcast my guest today is a talented singer out of toronto canada his name is gary beals mr beals how you doing today i'm doing good feeling good definitely how you doing i'm good man thanks for asking welcome to the bring back soul music podcast thank you for having me all right fantastic um now i mentioned you're out of uh, toronto canada you have a new single out called me for me which is a jam, I must tell All you. Right. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, mm-hmm. to keep people in suspense too long. Okay. Um, but before we do that, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. All right. Well, uh, I am a, a singer and a songwriter. Um, a little bit of background about me. Um, I'm originally from Nova Scotia in, in Canada, the province of Nova Scotia. Um, rich black history. And, uh, you know, I grew up singing in the church. Um, that's where I get, I guess, my soul, my gospel kind of sound from. Um, my parents used to play a lot of like, you know, old soul music, Al Green, Otis Redding kind of stuff. So I fell in, in love with music from a very young age, gospel, soul, um, some funk and stuff, James Brown type stuff. Um, yeah, and I just, you know, I, um, music is, is, is my passion. And um, yeah, I mean, I just want to be able to create thoughtful, authentic, um, vibrant kind of music. Music from the heart with a bit of emotion. Sometimes a lot of emotion. Right. And um, yeah, you can definitely uh, hear the soul in your voice. So Mm -hmm. um, music must have been real big in your household growing up. Yeah, I mean, my father used to play like, you know, those records he used to, like I said, he used to play like um, some some uh, James Brown, the funk kind of stuff um, from, you know, The Temptations to some Aretha, um, to Whitney, like so many, you know, so many different artists. Um, so I really fell in love with it. And then the, the church was kind of like the center of our community. So that's a place that I was at every Sunday. I was in the choir in Sunday school, so, um, you know, singing has always been a part of me since I've been a, a young little boy. Okay. When did you know, um, when did you know you wanted to do this for a living? Oh, gosh. I always had the desire or I always had that kind of dream to do this um, for a living, maybe when I was maybe about seven. Um, years old um yeah i was singing in 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 the choir and just the reaction that i got from the congregation it was it was a very overwhelming but a really uh joyous kind of feeling and i was just like okay you know i have the ability to touch people um through my gift given by god um and so you know it's something that i've always wanted to do since i've been young since i was young okay now what um we mentioned that um um you know, you're, you're highly influenced by some of the um, the artists that your parents played growing up. Um, just curious, um, what made you take this route versus, say, um, the gospel route? Um, good question. <laughs> um, well, I, you know, I used to sing in, in church a, a whole lot, um, and. Um, yeah, I just, I, oh gosh, I, I stopped going to church for <laughs> the last couple of years, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I had the the desire to not just reach people in the church, but to reach people outside of the church. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was kind of my desire to switch from sort of the gospel to the, the R&B sort of world, R&B soul. Okay. Do you have, um, do you have 
family or siblings that are in the music business as well, or it's just just you? No, uh, I mean, my brother, me and my brother, we used to be in this uh, gospel group when we were younger, like maybe 15 years old, um, called Light of Day. Um, so he, he did a little bit of singing, but I mean, not much. But other than that, uh, no, 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 no singing in my family. Okay. I mean, so, my mom, she used to sing, you know, she'd put the records on and sing, but you know, she doesn't really have much of a voice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's go back to, uh, now your first, uh, album was, I think you said 2003 or 2004. Yeah, my first album came out in 2004. Um, I was on this show. I mean, you guys have the, the American Idol. So we had Canadian Idol. So I was on Canadian Idol. That was back in 2003. And uh, I played second. And, uh, and then the next year I released an, an album. So that was my uh, self-titled album, Dear Beals. Okay. And um, were, now, were you signed to a, a company or you just did it independently? How did that um, it was Yeah, it was independent uh, through a manager of mine at the time. Uh, the um, album came out through his label. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what was the title of your, your first? Album? It was self-titled, so just Gary Beals. Gary Beals. Okay. And how was that received? Um, it was received very well because it was, you know, directly after Canadian Idol. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the platform, sort of the audience was there. Um, yeah, but it was a really overwhelming time at that time because, you know, it, it kind of, it was the first season on Canadian Idol that I was on. And, um, you know, we kind of didn't know what to expect with Canadian Idol and just kind of took on a world of its own. Okay. Um, so some of it, sometimes I can't remember. And then some of it, it comes back in pieces. Yeah, I got you. So, um, so that was the first album. Uh, what was your What was your second album? The second album was called "The Rebirth of," and uh, that came out in two thousand and nine. So I kind of took a little break, um, stepped back from doing music a bit, um, and then yeah, I released my second album. That was an independent album that I released. Um, yeah, and it was received well as well. Okay, why why the um why the why the gap between uh, the first and the second album? Yeah, good question. The gap, um, because after Idol, I guess before Idol, I was doing, um, you know, just performing in church and just at the different community events, and uh, and then Idol happened, and it was kind of you know just a kind of a, almost like an overnight success, and then boom, I just started like performing everywhere. And uh, I really needed a time, I needed some time to really kind of step back and just kind of collect myself and find out who it is that I was and what I wanted to sort of represent. So that was the kind of re that was the reason why I did that, that gap between those two albums. Okay. Did you, um, now did you, uh, did you tour uh, to support the album or? I'm not an official tour, but like performances throughout uh, Canada. Okay. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. And, um, and so from, um, 2009 to now, now this is your third album or yeah, third even song? Longer gap. <laughs> longer gap. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us about, um, let's, let's talk about me for me. Uh, right. like I said, I, I love it. Um, you sound like one of them soul singers from when I was a kid growing All up. All right, appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and the audience is going to hear that too when we play Me For Me. But um, tell us about tell us about the journey between um, the second album and then uh, Me For Me. Right, so uh, the second album released in 2009. Um, I did a lot of performances, 2009, 2010, 2011. And then I just really felt the need that I really need to kind of step back from music all together and just kind of live and and just experience life and 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 find out who it was that i that i am or was um and uh and then i would I, you know i would uh meet up with producers write music uh but the music it just didn't feel authentic to me um but i was also kind of just going through that phase of really finding out who it was that i that i am at that time and um, kind of trying to embrace also my sexuality at the same time. Um, so I think that was a reason for the, um, 
the the long break in between the second album from to now this album. Okay. Um, all right. So it was kind of a journey to, um, you know, to be more Definitely. true to, to yourself. Right. Okay. Got it. Got like it. a journey of kind of self discovery sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I just, yeah, I felt the, the really, the need to really step back and just kind of understand who it is that I was. Okay. What I wanted to represent. Now, how has, um, I'm sorry, is, is me for me? Is that released already? Is that out? Where people can yeah, it? me for me came out. Uh, gosh, uh, March the twentieth. March. Okay, so it just came out basically. Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, how has it been received so far? I know it's still kind of early, but how's um, it so far it's been received well. I mean, I I haven't released any music in ten years, um, but uh, you know, people love it. The emotion. Um, that I wanted people to feel with the, the record itself. That, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting that feedback. And it was, it was nerve wracking releasing a, a, some music again after so long, because it's like, you know, it's your baby and you hang on to it. And, you know, I love it, but you want other people to love it as well. And so it was nerve wracking kind of, you know, I, I wasn't sure how people were going to receive it. Um, but I'm happy to know that, you know, people really love it. And they get it, you know, even without me having to explain what Me For Me is all about. People get that, you know, I get messages in terms of like, oh gosh, this, is, this song really, it touched me and this is what I get from it. So it's, it's a good feeling. Okay. Did you, um, now between the uh, second album and Me For Me, did you have some of the same fans? Did they remember you from... The second album, or they're just now rediscovering uh, me again. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I still had that, uh, I guess, that core support, and and because I'm from Nova Scotia, there's that, um, you know, there's that really strong support system that I have that I'm really appreciative of. Um, so yeah, they, I mean, they stuck around. They're still around, and then the goal is to just get you know more people to listen to the song, um, to the song, and and to the album once it's released. Okay. Yeah. And can we expect more music like Me For Me or did you kind of delve into maybe rock or pop uh, or? Not rock, but kind of pop, a little bit of, uh, like it's, it's, it's really an eclectic album um, and it shows just different sides of, of me. Um, so yeah, you can expect a little bit of Me For Me, but you can expect something like, you know, a different kind of vibe at the same time. More up -te There's some up-tempo, dancey kind of track. Um, some smooth tracks, um, so it's a. It, I like to say it's, it's really eclectic. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, take me through your uh, your writing style. How do you? How do you? Um, is it a concept that you're trying to uh, come up with, or um, how do you? How do I start the process to write a song? I mean, because right. Um, I'm 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 a like. I mean, I guess from listening to like soul music, growing up listening to soul music, I, I have to feel something, I have to feel music. So when I uh, met up with the producer, the first time I met up with the producer was actually when we wrote Me For Me. That was my first time working with him creatively. And uh, my process is, you know, the producer would just kind of create a beat based on, you know, I would keep a concept or kind of a feel as to how I want the song to be musically. And, um, and then they would just create the music. And then from there, I would just write based on how I'm feeling, based on, you know, things that I've been through. Um, and so that's kind of how it, kind of how it happened. And it happened, and uh, it happened really organically as well. Okay, now how long did it take you uh, from start to finish to, to complete Me For Me? Um, we did, actually we wrote, uh, we met up um, an evening and we came up with the instrumentation, the music for it. And then we wrote the first verse and the second verse. And then we just laid it down that night. And then the next day I went home and then I wrote, the, the, I just finished writing the uh, song itself so i would say two days it took to write okay and then we did a little bit of refining after that all right um, i'm assuming your your family loves it as well right yeah i mean unless they're lying to me <laughs> <laughs> i hope they love it <laughs> but no no like my brother my brother texted me i talked to him the other day and then he 
he, I told him to go listen to the song and then he didn't message me back right away. And I'm like, okay, maybe he doesn't like the song. But then two days later, he's like, yeah, I love it. It's raw, it's authentic, you know, it's filled with emotion. So I was like, yeah, okay, I got you. And then my mom and my dad, they listen to it, they love it. Fantastic, okay. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know what's not to like about it, but <laughs> um, I guess we, you know, tease the audience just enough. We're gonna get into Gary Bills and Me For Me. This is Gary Bills and Me For Me on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. We'll be right back. Continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. All right, Gary, we're back. Yeah. Great song. Love it. And I'm sure people are going to love it too. Now, I hope so. yeah. Um, now, we were talking earlier, um, you know, with the whole you know, coronavirus thing. Right. Corn is probably out of the question for you, at least, you know, in the near future. How yeah. Do you, how do you plan on um, promoting this uh, this great song you have? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Corona came around, COVID-19 came around and kind of just knocked us off our feet a little bit. Um, so, you know, I had some performances lined up. Obviously, they, they got canceled. Um, but just to promote the, the song, Me For Me, um, continue to promote it through social media, um, maybe do some live stuff on social media as well, Instagram, um, some stuff on Facebook. We also have a video uh, for the song as well that's um, set to come out, so um, that'll kind of, you know, bring back a little bit more momentum for the song itself and hopefully uh, widen the audience um, to get more eyes and ears on the track itself. Um, so I'm excited for the release of the video. Um, yeah, I mean, promote it any way we can through radio. Um, yeah, and just look at other ways in which we can strategically kind of get it out. Gary, and um, uh, you said that you're going to release a uh, video. Is That's the right. video completed or? You yeah, the video's or... done. The video's done. We just need eyes to see it, and we're ready to release it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited for people to see this video. Okay, and is it going to be on uh, on your YouTube channel, or how are you gonna how are you? Yeah, gonna... it'll be it'll come out on the, my YouTube channel, which is uh, Gary Bills Music. Um, I'll also uh, we'll also have it on the socials, so my Facebook and uh, Instagram as well. If it's not the full video on the socials, it'll be. Um, It'll be uh, a, a trailer, a snippet of it. Okay, it's and going. we'll have um, we'll have information about Gary and all his um, his social media sites, his YouTube, um, to, I mean, his YouTube, his YouTube channel, and all his social media sites in the show notes if you're watching on um, YouTube and also on our website at Bring Back Soul Music TV, Bring Back Soul Music dot com. Excuse me, <laughs> Bring Back Soul Music dot com. Okay, mm -hmm. are you getting a lot of airplay? Um, up in uh, Toronto? Um, we haven't actually uh, solicited to like radio stations. Okay. Um, more so just kind of, we just rolled it out uh, online, kind of social media just to start it out. Um, sort of like a soft kind of launch and then just, just build from there. Um, okay. But yeah, the plan is definitely to take it to, to radio. Like I said, once the, um, the video comes out, just build, continue to build from there. Okay, do you have a date for the uh, video release? Um, it looks like uh, around maybe mid, mid, mid April. So Gary, um, um, uh, let me ask you a question about your upcoming album. Yeah. How close is it to being done? Is it almost completed or where are we at with that? Uh, so the album is pretty much done. We just need to kind of refine it a little bit for the, but for the most part it's, it, it's completed and I'm just eager to get more music out to, you know, to, to hopefully bless the people with some more music. <laughs> Do you have a name for the album yet? Um, I have a name. But I'm not gonna say the not name, but I, <laughs> we can break the news. Here. I won't expose the name just yet, but yeah. All right, you I, sure I you do don't want to break it? <laughs> you sure? No, 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 no. All right, man. But sooner or later, you will hear the name of it. 
Okay, got it, got it. All right, all right. So, well, that's cool, man. I'm, um, I'm waiting to hear the rest of the album. If the if the rest of the album is any indication to what me for me is, um, yeah, can't wait to hear it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get some, you know, some some responses, you know, on 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 the album. I I love it. I mean, I just love the album. Every now and then, you know, I take a break from listening to it, and then I'll listen to it, and then I'll just text or I'll call my producer, and I'll be like, "Honestly, this is a good album. It's a good <laughs> album. I'm so proud of it." So, you know, um, COVID kind of got in the way of us kind of moving along, like we, you know, more so uh, faster than we wanted to. But you know, it, it was good for the kind of slowdown. But I'm I'm excited just to share it and to get it out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious. Is, timing but is everything. Timing has to be right. I don't want to rush it. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Um, okay. So are you big into uh, social media? Um. You know, funny, funny. Well, I mean, because when I when I did Idol in in my second album in 2009, like there was there was no social media. I mean, there was Facebook when I did my um, my second album. Um, so it took me a while. Like I'm I'm a new bloomer to uh, social media and you know, trying to kind of get my feet wet a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I'll eventually find my bearings a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I kind of, uh, I'm just a, a baby when it comes to social media. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, uh, social media is so, uh, so prevalent in our lives now. I know, uh, right? But it's a great and tool. Then, and then, because you know, before I used to be like this private kind of person, um, so it's just like, you know, it's now like having to expose yourself even more, which is it's funny because that's really what the, the album itself is about and, and me for me is the both vulnerability and exposing of your of yourself. Um, so it, it's kind of like, yeah. Interesting. Oh, okay. Is, um, you said you're a private person. I guess we all were pretty private before <laughs> social media. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, do you find that um, people are... Um, well, how do you, how do people react to you? I mean, are they are they critical of you or? Um, you uh, no, not really. Um, yeah, in terms of how people react, I mean, it's pretty genuine. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I you know I, I'll put myself out there and, and and be as authentic as I can, and I think you know people sense that and they see that, and you know, I mean, I guess they just receive it well, either they receive it or they don't, and if they don't, then I just don't give energy to that. Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, you keep doing you, man. I mean, um, you, know, you only got one life, and you gotta uh, exactly you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. So, um, so let's get back to uh, me for me now. You co-wrote that with uh, another producer. Um. So yeah, the producer uh, created the music for it, and then uh, it was written. The lyrics were written by myself and uh, actual cousin of mine. He's a hip hop artist. Um, he actually introduced me to the producer Loge, and uh, like I said, we just we, we came together one night, and uh, yeah, we created this "Me for Me" song um, that just happened organically. I kind of went in the booth and did a little bit, bit of freestyling, and that's how we kind we came up with the, the pre-chorus. And then we, we wrote the the, uh, the bridge, and then you know right we wrote the, uh, the, the the verse, the first verse, and then I I wrote I wrote the second verse, and then you know the the, the bridge to it. So okay, um, all right, well, kind of how it was all crafted. Okay, so um, you're like the third artist I've interviewed for um, from Toronto. All right, um, tell Don't me about. Good luck. <laughs> I'm about to say, tell me about the. The R and B slash soul scene in in Toronto because it seems to be pretty um, hot right now. That's a good one. Uh, R and B soul scene, uh, yeah, uh, it's happening. It could do a whole lot better here, um, but I mean, there's so much talent here in Toronto. I, I it's just, there's just not much of a platform and resources for us in Toronto. Um, but you know, we do what we can, and we come together collectively and. You know, there's showcases, there's shows that are happening. Um, there's live performance venues. Um, I perform with a lot of different bands in the city, um, some like Motown, soul, R&B type bands. Um, so, I mean, it's happening. 
Um, and then, you know, obviously Drake has kind of opened up people's eyes to Toronto a bit more. Right, right. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, sh shine some light on us so okay. that we can showcase our talent a bit more. Okay. And getting back, I just want kind of one quick question on the uh, on the Corona thing. Are you still performing uh, in clubs or that that's pretty much shut down right no, now? No, everything, you know, the club, uh, bars, restaurants, everything is shut down here. Only a okay. bunch of Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, yeah. just release a, a, a hit and <laughs> I know can't get out and it happened around. just before. Um, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, Corona came and then the, uh, the song was released. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it was good to kind of get my feet wet, get back out there and, and, and you know, just breathe a little bit and not feel overwhelmed by it. So, um, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason. So I'm fine. I, I agreed. And I think that, you know, I always try to look at the glasses half full. So half full. So, you know, this will give you a chance to maybe create a little buzz. So when you do get back out there, people are itching to right, um, right, hear, right. You, hear you perform live. So Right. Yeah. Okay. And I'm excited to perform live. I mean, you know, I love performing with like a, a live band. So I'm excited to perform my own music uh, with a band. Just get out there and, and, and see how people react and, and respond to it. Do you have a, well, when, well, who knows when this thing is going to be over, but um, have you uh, penetrated the, uh, the U.S. market yet or how? No, I mean, that's the plan to kind of, you know, dive into the U.S. scene. Um, I, I, you know, I perform maybe once or twice in the U.S. Um, but yeah, I mean, the goal is to just, you know, get the music out there and, and hopefully create some interest and in, in getting more music out and, and do more collaboration, um, do more songwriting and just get more music out there. But definitely, I, 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 I love to come over there and perform and uh, yeah, just, just meet the people. Okay. Now, um, are there producers out there that, um, I guess maybe if you have a wish list of producers you wouldn't mind uh, working with? Oh gosh, uh, that's a good question. Some producers, this, uh, gosh. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll dream big. <laughs> Say, I would love to work with Dre, some Pharrell, um, uh, do some stuff with Anderson Pack. I'm a big fan of Anderson Pack. Um, yeah, um, gosh, I mean, there's a, an array of producers that I would love to work with, and just even pull more of me out, even parts of myself that you know I I, I don't even know that I could even go that way musically or or take my voice that way. So you know, I'm I'm excited about the doors that can be opened based on me releasing some new material. Okay. Now, let me ask you, do you, um, um, do you see yourself as a, as a role model inspiration to, you, you mentioned, uh, the getting to know you part and, um, um, you see yourself as, um, well, what do you hope people get out of your music? Um, you know, I, music has been really healing for me, even uh, writing this album. It's been very therapeutic um, and I've learned so much more about myself, um, just embracing more of myself um, and just understanding my journey and that everything, you know, it happens for a reason and, um, and that there's so much more um, out there for me. And, uh, I, you know, I just want to be authentic with my with my music and just authentic with myself. So if anything, I want people to just embrace the music. I want it to give them a sense of hope and, and, and just kind of make them think as well. Um, yeah, just reflect. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I kind of some of the songs are really reflective of, of like my childhood, um, just growing up, because sometimes, you know, when people, you know, when you just we're living life, you know, there's layers that are thrown on to us, whether it's, you know, from culture or just opinions of other people. And sometimes you, you, you lose yourself through all of that. And so this album, I, I you know, I found myself, I'm enlightened, I'm, I'm, I, I feel great and I'm excited about sharing this album. So yeah, I just want people to really embrace it and, uh, and be inspired by it. You know, we all have something to offer the world and whatever talent you have, um, it, you know, it needs to be showcased. Okay. 
All right. Now, where can uh, tell us where we can uh, we can purchase uh, your music? Oh, uh, you can purchase it on Apple, on um, Spotify. Um, find it on SoundCloud. Um, it's all on the streaming platforms. Okay. Got it, got it. Okay, and um, well, Gary, um, it was great talking to you today, man. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Likewise. Um, now, I don't want to, I don't want to um, rush you or anything. I mean, no. I know you can't do much. <laughs> I'm in the house. I can't go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't do much, but um, you're not gonna make us wait another nine years before you kind of. No, 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 no. I'm the boss now. I'm good. <laughs> Is you plan to do more music? No, no, I'm excited actually to actually just to do more writing. Like I said, to do more collaboration. Um, yeah, I mean, it feels good to be out there and, and, and that I've gotten my feet wet. And um, I'm just excited to do more. All right. Do you, uh, quick question, do you, uh, do you write for other artists too? No, no, no. I mean, maybe that's something I'll do in the, in, in the near future, in the future. But for now, it's just kind of just, just writing my own stuff. I got you. Man. I appreciate it. Um, and we can look for you on all the Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. You have all that. Maybe stuff TikTok. On. I, I need I, to get on TikTok. You know, I haven't, I'm not into the TikTok thing yet. I see people doing the TikTok stuff, but I. I know. It looks, it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it do. It does. It does. But yeah. uh, I appreciate you, man, coming on the show today. Yeah. yeah, man. Keep in touch, man, and keep us posted on um on what you're doing, man. Um, yeah, I I definitely will. Okay. Yeah. And Thank you, know, you brother. Have to check out the video when it's out and when we get some new releases out. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the plan was to do more, um, shoot more videos. Okay. Um, but you know, kind of situation that's happening now kind of put a little it halted that a bit. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll get Chandler. you back on the show too at some point, man. Yeah, um, for sure. It'll be after. Good all this kind of you know things guys down right of that. and then uh, yeah, yeah yeah once you start getting the album out there man i'd love to have you back and talk about the album and yeah all the good stuff yeah for sure for sure all right gary amen all right Thanks, appreciate brother. it talk thank you very much yeah thank you very much talk for having me appreciate really nice it. meeting you man and uh likewise you know, good luck with everything, man. I hope um, you get a chance to get out on the road and expose more people to uh, to your music. And I think yeah, once it's all once this thing is all over with uh, and then things are back to normal, I'm excited about getting back on the road. And uh, hopefully, I'll be out in California man. and I can meet you in the flesh. There you go. Look right. forward to it, my friend. Yeah. All right, Gary. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you again. All right, and that's Gary Beals on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Gary Beals. You can find out more about Gary on his website at GaryBealsMusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. If there are any questions or comments, please email us at comments at BringBackSoulMusic.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. Taking us home this evening is Gary Beals and another song called Good Company. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. The sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky are jealous of your shine. You're an ultimate high. I'm so glad that you're mine. Yeah, a million words cannot express the way that I'm so strong for you. You got me feeling, you got me feeling, oh And honestly, I don't care at all If it's on the low or if we decide to tell it all Cause can't nobody stop this feeling Cause it is like Paradise, 
Nobody stop this feeling 